Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're kicking off a new sponsored video series here on the channel on behalf of the Mocha Alliance. They're the folks behind technology that you'll find in boxes like this one from Action Tech that allow you to extend your home computer network through your cable or satellite TV wiring. It provides a very reliable network connection and it does not interfere with your cable or satellite TV services. So you get uh, much more reliable networking with no impact to your TV. Can't be better than that. Uh, we've covered these quite a bit here on the channel. I like them a lot. I use them all the time. Many of you watching have also taken advantage of this technology to get a more reliable network connection. And what Mocha has asked me to do uh, is take a bunch of use cases and make uh, specific videos about each of those cases and why uh, network extension via wire is the way to go. And in this video, we're going to focus on multiplayer gaming uh, because gamers have very specific network needs. They need something fast, they need something reliable, they need very low lag, and they need consistency. And that's something that we're going to see when we start running through some benchmarks on this technology is that it delivers a significantly more reliable networking and faster networking uh, versus other technologies like Wi-Fi mesh. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship from the Mocha Alliance. They will also be reviewing this video before it is posted. And we're also going to be having some products like this one from Action Tech appear in the video. Uh, these were provided free of charge to the channel from Action Tech. So let's get into it. We're going to do a lot of techie deep diving in this one. So uh, get ready. We've got a lot of numbers to throw around, but I think you'll enjoy that. Uh, but before we get into that, I do want to show you how to get these things set up on your network first and how easy it is. And then we'll get into some of the benchmarking. Now, connecting up these boxes is very easy. Uh, what I did in my home is I set one up in my equipment room where my router is located. So I plugged uh, the TV wire into this coax in port. I plugged this portion here, the ethernet jack, into my router, and then I got another box and located it in the bedroom on the far end of the house. And immediately, this box saw the other one, and I plugged in my Xbox into the ethernet jack here, and the Xbox got on the ethernet using this adapter. Very, very simple. When you want to add more rooms to the mix, you just buy more adapters, plug them in, and they automatically uh, connect up and see the other ones on your network. No drivers, no configuration. It all just kind of works. Uh, Action Tech also has this device, which is a, a Wi-Fi access point. So what you do in this instance is you plug in your coax cable into the back here. It sees the other Mocha devices on your network. It gets connected to the internet. It provides Wi-Fi to devices in the far reaches of your home, but it also adds two wired connections as well. So if you had a computer and an Xbox in that room, for example, you could plug them in directly and then provide wireless to that portion of the house very easily as well. Now, I've covered uh, more detail on this stuff in other videos, which I'll link to in the uh, playlist you can find in the video description. One other note is that many cable carriers already build Mocha into their router uh, modem combo devices that you may have installed in your home. So it's possible you may not need to have that first device connected to your router because it may already be in the router. So give a call to your cable carrier first before you start buying devices because if you have it built in, uh, then all you need to do is get one of these on the other side of the house and you are ready to go. So let's take a look now and see how this performs. We've got a lot of data to go over here and I will uh, compare this to a Google Wi-Fi mesh system that I also tested uh, with the same stuff here. So you'll see how extending your network with a wire is going to be better than relying on uh, Wi-Fi signals going from one end of your house to the other to get data back and forth to the internet. Now I say with a wire because if you have the ability and means to wire your house up with ethernet, uh, that is certainly going to be the ideal networking scenario. But what Mocha really benefits by is the fact that if you have this cable TV wiring in your house, you can get similar performance and similar reliability without having to go through the expense of having an electrician come in and wire everything up. But if you're able to do it, uh, that by all means is probably the best way to go. But this is the next best thing. So let's dig into my Wi-Fi mesh configuration here, and then we'll start getting into some of those benchmarks. Now, the mesh system we're using in this video is equipped with 802.11 AC radios, 2x2 two two at 5 gigahertz, and all of the devices that we connected up to the device 
are also running with 5 gigahertz AC Wi-Fi. That includes a MacBook Pro from late 2016 with the touch bar, an Xbox One S, and an Alienware 15 R3 gaming laptop. So let's take a look and see how I have everything configured. Uh, in my home, all the uh, internet and cable and power uh, come in through the basement, and that is where I located the main mesh unit. This is kind of the router node. Uh, so this one connected up to the internet. But I have this bedroom on the other side of the house that can never get to a Wi-Fi access point in the basement because there's just too much house in between uh, these two points. And this is one of the advantages of Wi-Fi mesh. So what I was able to do was put a mesh unit in the kitchen. And because the uh, device in the basement here can see the kitchen one, the kitchen one can transit its data to the basement for me and back again. So it kind of acts as an intermediate intermediary uh, between this bedroom uh, and the basement and the internet so I can get my signal working where it wouldn't work before uh, because the kitchen unit here is able to transit the data for us and uh, that generally works but again you're dealing with wireless signals here to bridge the gap and wireless can be very unreliable uh, depending on things like the weather in some instances uh, the construction of your home in many other instances and if you are in a very densely populated area Area where there's a lot of other Wi-Fi users nearby, like an apartment building or a condo park or something like that, uh, you'll see a lot of interference that will impact your performance. I'm very fortunate to live out in the middle of nowhere, essentially, where my neighbors are far away. I rarely have any interference at all, but uh, even then you're going to see some uh, pretty significant differences in performance here as we start working our way through these benchmarks. So let's take a look now at the Xbox that is up in that room, and I wanted to start with some ping testing. And what I did is I ran the, uh, the network diagnostic that's built into the Xbox. This goes out to Microsoft, it tests bandwidth. It also tests the ping. In other words, how fast do uh, data packets get from one end to the other and back again, which is very important uh, in a gaming scenario because you want the smallest amount of ping uh, between you and the server that you're connecting with so that your actions in game don't lag and you're not put at a competitive disadvantage. So check this out. I connected my Xbox One S in the equipment room over there directly to my router via an ethernet cable. Uh, this is kind of the pristine test here. I took everything off the network to make sure we had nothing else interfering. And I was getting ping rates to Microsoft servers at about 74 milliseconds or so, which is about what I usually see here with my internet connection. So uh, that was the baseline. I then took the Xbox One S and went all the way over to the other side of the house, upstairs in that far-flung bedroom, and connected the Xbox One S to a Mocha adapter that was plugged into uh, the TV jack in that room. I connected the Xbox to the Ethernet jack on the back of the Mocha adapter, and then ran that very same test again. And we saw a little bit of added latency, but not a lot, about four or five milliseconds uh, in that test there. So you can see we were getting about 79 milliseconds in uh, that same test over Mocha. And then I wanted to see what happens when other people started getting on the network and began utilizing it in different ways. And what I did is set up a test uh, just within the local network while running this Xbox test, because I didn't want to go out to the internet and impact things that way. I just wanted to see what impact even just local traffic might have on this mesh scenario. So what I did is I set up a laptop and a tablet uh, in the kitchen and just started having them stream some media inside the house. So what they were doing is they were connected wirelessly to this node and pulling stuff from things that were connected to the uh, router unit in the basement. So we have the uh, intermediary node here acting as a connection point for a couple of laptops while the Xbox in the bedroom is running its network test, but none of the uh, laptops in the kitchen were utilizing the internet, just drawing stuff from a server that was connected down in the basement. So we had some network activity going on, uh, beginning to saturate perhaps the connection points here between these nodes, which again is wireless. And uh, look what happened here. We went from seeing you know, a uh, ping rate to that Microsoft server in the 80 millisecond range or so and now it dropped to 100 and, or went up to 120 milliseconds meaning that we got a lot more lag about a 54 percent increase in lag uh, once other people locally on the network started doing stuff 
And again, these folks locally were not communicating out to the internet. So any traffic is going to have some impact here, and depending on what they're doing, it might uh, impact that ping rate in different ways. It was very unpredictable, but uh, this was the average that I saw uh, as we were running some stuff on that kitchen node while still running that uh, test in the bedroom connected to the Wi-Fi mesh. Now, another thing I did uh, was try to replicate that test using Mocha technology. So remember, we had the Xbox connected to the Mocha device in the bedroom. Uh, we had the other Mocha device downstairs connected up to the router so that the Xbox could get on the internet. I took out this Mocha device, connected it to another random cable jack in the house, a couple of rooms down, and then I connected up a laptop to the ethernet here and ran an internal network test called iPerf that essentially saturates the network as best it can. Now these Mocha devices, at least the ones that I'm using here, can uh, transit a gigabit of data between each other, but it's shared among all of the Mocha devices in the house, that single uh, gigabit of bandwidth. And even with that thing going full blast, we had very little noticeable impact in ping rate. We went from like 79 milliseconds to 81 milliseconds, not a uh, tremendously uh, large uh, increase in lag, yet we were really heavily saturating the local network on another Mocha node. So it can really better accommodate a lot of additional users without an impact in our gameplay. So let's take a look now at a game. This is Sea of Thieves, a popular new online game. And on Ethernet, we were getting ping rates at around uh, the high 60s to low 70s, give or take. So that's kind of our baseline here. Uh, we then switched over to the mesh system uh, where we were connected to that bedroom node. And with nobody else using the mesh network, we were getting uh, slightly higher ping rates, but not significantly so, uh, kind of in the 70s to mid 80s. But when we started putting some load again on that kitchen node, uh, we saw the ping rates getting a bit longer. Uh, it went into the 90s and the 100s. And when we then brought a uh, laptop into the same room as the uh, computer that was running the game, we were getting even heavier ping lag when we started to really uh, tax the network from the same node that the gaming laptop was connected to. But when we moved over to Mocha, we were seeing ping rates similar to what we were getting on Ethernet. And even when I had that third Mocha device really taxing the Mocha network, we did not see an impact to our ping rate. It was pretty much performing exactly as it was even when nobody else was on the Mocha network. But ping rates are not the entire story. We should also look at how much maximum bandwidth do we have available to us. Now, uh, my internet connection here at the house uh, has 300 megabits per second downstream, but only about 10 or 11 upstream. I don't have very high upstream speeds here. But what I did do was run my network bandwidth testing within the local network so I could see what the maximum was uh, with this Google Mesh configuration. And uh, there we saw on the base unit of uh, speeds of about half a gigabit per second, 500 megabits per second, up and down uh, when I was pretty much right next to the node. This is, of course, the main node that was acting as the router. Uh, so very good speeds here on my AC wireless notebook, and uh, that was pretty good. But when we went to the kitchen, uh, we saw those speeds drop dramatically. So again, I'm connecting to the mesh node in the kitchen. That one is connecting wirelessly back to the base station. And you can see what a reduction in overall bandwidth we get uh, when we're under that scenario. Because remember, uh, these things are not connected via a wire. They're connected wirelessly to each other. So the laptop's connecting wirelessly to the kitchen node. It, in turn, is uh, transmitting data back and forth wirelessly with the basement. And likewise, when we got to the bedroom, you can see how far things dropped. Again, even though we're connected to the bedroom mesh unit, uh, it was only able to max out at 87 megabits per second downstream, and I was only able to upload at 66 megabits per second. So you see a pretty sizable reduction in performance here and also an increase in its ping rate. And again, this is on the local network, so anything that you would be doing on the internet would essentially have that number added to uh, what you would otherwise get. But here was the interesting part. When we looked at the Mocha performance, again, plugging that Mocha device into the bedroom, I was getting essentially Ethernet speeds uh, when running the same speed test from that same far-flung uh, bedroom uh, connection uh, over our cable TV wiring, uh, close to a gigabit in both directions and a very low ping rate here. So uh, very high performance when you use a wire 
uh, to connect everything up. But there's one more thing to look at here, which is also of interest, which is the fact that you can use Mocha as the backbone of your mesh network in many cases if the device supports it. Uh, we did a whole video about how the Google Wi-Fi supports that feature. And what we did is rather than have these mesh devices connect wirelessly to each other, I connected the mesh node in the bedroom to that Mocha adapter and then it was able to connect to the unit in the basement via uh, Ethernet, essentially, and speed up the connection dramatically. So we went from very low speeds before, 87.4 down and 66 up, when we connected that bedroom node to Mocha and backhauled its data downstairs over the cable TV wires to Ethernet, we had speeds very close to what we would receive if we were connected to the unit in the basement directly. A pretty sizable performance increase, again, using a wire as the backbone as opposed to using wireless as the backbone. A tremendous difference in performance when you do that. So there you have it. You can see how extending your network with a wire is going to provide lower latency see faster speeds and more reliability than relying on a wireless connection to do so, especially when you're playing games. And I do want to thank the Mocha Alliance for supporting the channel. I hope you'll join me in thanking them. And I would also love to get some more ideas from all of you about other use cases we should explore in this series in the weeks ahead. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including gold-level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.